just outside Havana Harbor, 1939, 18 days from home. Joseph tried to hang on to the chair, but his father was still strong enough to yank it out of his hands. Papa stacked it on the tower of furniture he'd already piled up against the door. We can't let them back in, Papa cried. They'll come for us again and take us away. It had taken Joseph and his mother a night and a day to put their cabin back together after Otto Schindek and his goons had torn the place up. But in a span of fifteen minutes, his father had undone it all again, snatching up anything that wasn't nailed down and stacking it against the door. Ruthie crouched in the corner, crying and hugging Bitsy. Joseph's mother had sewed the stuffed bunny back together first thing, before Ruthie had seen it headless. Aaron! Aaron! Joseph's mother said now. You have to calm down. You're scaring your daughter. He was scaring Joseph, too. Joseph stared at his father. This skeleton, this crazed ghost, this wasn't his father. The Nazis had taken his father away and replaced him with a madman. You don't understand, Joseph's father said. You can't know what they did to people, what they'll do to us. Papa threw an open suitcase on the pile spilling clothes all over the room. When he'd put everything he could on the barricade, he crawled under the desk at the back of the room like a child playing hide-and-seek. Mama looked frightened as she tried to figure out what to do. Ruthie, she said at last, put your swimsuit on and go to the pool. I don't want to go swimming, Ruthie said, still crying in the corner. Do as I say, Mama said. Ruthie pulled herself away from the wall and picked through the clothes on the floor for her swimsuit. Joseph, Mama said, low enough for just him to hear her. I'm going to go to the ship's doctor for a sleeping draft for your father, something to calm him. I'll take Ruthie to the pool, but I need you to stay here and watch your father. Papa was still curled into a ball under the desk, rocking and muttering to himself. The idea of being here alone with him filled Joseph with dread. But if the doctor knows he's unwell, they might not let us into Cuba, Joseph whispered, desperate to find some reason to keep his mother with him. I'll tell the doctor I'm anxious and haven't been sleeping, Mama said. I'll tell him the draft is for me. Joseph's mother helped Ruthie finish putting her swimsuit on, and together they were able to pull the haphazard pile of furniture far enough away from the door to open it. Joseph's father, who had been so set on building the barricade just minutes before, was so lost in his own mind, he didn't even notice. Joseph didn't know what to do with himself, so he started to put the room back together. Papa stayed quiet and still under the desk. Joseph hoped he had gone to sleep. Mama came back within minutes, and Joseph felt an immense sense of relief. Until he saw the dull, panicked look Mama wore, and he got scared all over again. She stumbled as she entered the cabin like she couldn't remember how to walk, and Joseph hurried to help her to one of the beds. Mama, what is it? What's wrong? Joseph asked. I... I told the doctor the sleeping draft was for me, she said, her words slow. And he made me... He made me... Take it right there. You drank it? Joseph said. His mother's eyelids fluttered. I had to, she said. After I told him... After I told him, couldn't let him know Aaron was really the one who... Mama's eyelids closed, and she swayed. Joseph panicked. She couldn't go to sleep. Not now. How was he supposed to take care of his father? He couldn't do this alone. Mama, don't go to sleep. Her eyes jerked open again, but they had lost their focus. Your sister, she said. Don't forget. Your sister... She's at the pool. Her eyes flickered closed again, and she rolled back onto the bed. No, 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 Joseph said. He tried patting his mother on the cheeks to wake her up, but she was out cold. Joseph got up and paced the room, trying to think. With his mother asleep, he had to watch his father every second. Joseph glanced at him under the desk. Papa was quiet now, but the slightest thing could set him off. Joseph couldn't go for help anyway. If anyone knew his father was unwell, he'd be barred from entering Cuba. But Joseph also had to go get Ruthie at some point, 
and make sure she got dinner and was put to bed. Suddenly, Joseph was the man of the family, the only adult in the family, whether he wanted to be or not. Have you ever seen a man drown? Papa asked in a whisper, and Joseph jumped. Joseph wasn't sure if Papa was talking to him or just talking, but he was afraid to answer, afraid to break the quiet spell his father was under. His father kept talking. After the evening roll call, they would choose someone to drown, one every night. They would tie his ankles together and his hands behind his back and tie a gag around his mouth, and then they would hang him upside down with his head in a barrel, like a fish, like a big fish on the pier, hanging upside down by its tail. Then they would fill the barrel with water, slowly, so they could enjoy the panic, so they could laugh. And then the water would rise high enough to cover his nose, and he would breathe in the water because there was nothing else he could do. He would breathe in water like a fish. Only, he wasn't a fish. He was a man. He would thrash around and breathe water until he drowned, drowned upside down. Joseph's breathing stilled. He caught himself hugging Ruthie's stuffed bunny tight. Every night they did it. And we all had to stand and watch, his father whispered. We had to stand and watch, and we couldn't say a word, couldn't move a muscle, or we would be next. Tears rolled down Joseph's cheeks. He thought about how he'd treated his father at the Cuban doctor's examination, how he'd made his father believe he was back in that place where he'd seen so many awful things. I can't go back there, his father whispered. Can't go back. His father closed his eyes and put his head between his knees, and soon he was asleep. Joseph sat with his sleeping parents until the cabin started to get dark, and he couldn't put off finding Ruthie any longer. He would just have to be as quick as he could. Joseph left the cabin and found his sister splashing around in the pool with the other kids. Joseph asked the steward to bring their dinners to their cabin tonight, and as he led Ruthie back. He congratulated himself on surviving his first day as an adult, until he opened the door and his father was gone. Joseph dropped Ruthie's hand and got down on his hands and knees to search under the beds, but his father wasn't there. He wasn't in the cabin at all. No, no! Joseph cried. He shook his mother, begged her to wake up, but the sleeping draft was too powerful. Joseph spun in the room, trying to figure out what to do. He snatched up Bitsy and put the little stuffed bunny into Ruthie's arms. "Stay here," he told Ruthie. "Stay here with Mama and don't leave the cabin. Understand? I've got to find Papa." Joseph ran out the door and into the passageway. But where to now? Where would his father go? Papa hadn't left the cabin the whole trip, and now he had decided to leave. Joseph heard a commotion, and he sprinted up the stairs to A deck. Up ahead, a man was helping a woman to her feet, and both of them were looking angrily over their shoulders, the direction Papa must have run. And that's when Joseph remembered, his father had left the cabin before, to watch them bury Professor Viler at sea. Somewhere up ahead, a woman screamed, and Joseph took off at a run. He felt as though he was outside himself. Like he existed outside his own skin, and he watched himself slam into the rail and look over the side. Someone yelled, "Man overboard!" and the ship's siren shrieked. Joseph's father had jumped into the sea.